So I'll be talking of black tax and savings. Um, if there's one thing I know many millennials are struggling with when it comes to savings is black tax. Black tax refers to the financial support which is expected of any working class individual by their families. While some see this as an obligation, others don't. Some do it with joy, others don't. The problem with the situation is that for our parents, they didn't have the benefits of the current pension scheme, which came up through the pension reform of 2004. Hence, they really do, do not have so much to fall back to after, or did not have so much to fall back to after their retirement. I hope this won't be the case for my generation when we get to that age or the, the age of our parents. Also, income level in Nigeria is so low with the minimum wage for civil servant at 30,000 naira. When you add that to the black tax situation, people are left with nothing or little or nothing to save. The problem with black tax is that it can be impromptu, it can be unplanned. So all that you saved can be spent on solving a particular issue. So the question is, what can be done? I believe this is where financial planning comes into play. Saving through voluntary pension contributions um, mutual funds and even taking bets on local international stock markets would help a young person while he meets or she rather meets his or her black tax obligation. So what do you wow. guys think? You're a finance <laughs> professional par excellence. <laughs> when you are talking about black tax from research, black tax did far some years back in South Africa. Yes. The issue of um, the emancipation of the black community when they begin to get white collar job mm -hmm. blue collar job even mm -hmm. different collar job mm -hmm. for those of you that understand this <laughs> i do have the life coach is looking at me of that. so what i'm saying is that you know many of them were leaving the villages to yeah. cities and town to take up jobs mm -hmm. as clerk um what do you call them secretaries what have you mm -hmm. and craftsmen so the little they get by way of entitlement kind of the family the family was like okay i have someone in town i know he's going to send this oh the so -so person needs to pay our school fees oh we need to buy this we need to do that so the person on his own will be blackmailed emotionally into doing that because even if it, it is not convenient he will not he or she will not feel comfortable so that's where the 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 um, origination or the origin of a black tax rather but over years the world has adopted that term black tax from South Africa. So black tax now, anybody. Now there's another research that said that some migrants, especially is common among blacks um, in countries like US, UK and what have you, when they migrate down, there's always high expectation from people back home. Oh, exactly. I have a brother in Canada or a sister in America. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. she will send me a hundred dollars. But you don't know what they are passing through. To get that. To get exactly. that. So, but you just feel entitled, okay, because I have someone outside. Mm -hmm. The person was always send me money. And that's why they said, this is the consequence of not having a lot of this migrant building generational worlds. If mm. you calculate the number of, um, sorry I'm using this terminology, but I just have to use it to explain it. If you go to countries like America, the um, white community, they have more, the percentages of the rich are always more compared to the black because of things like this. So it's, it's now like boils down to the social construct. How can the government, through meaningful institutions, solve the problem of poverty because it boils down to poverty? If social amenities are put into place and proper sensitization, people will not really bother much, especially young people trying to get a job about their parents or so, because somehow the society will take care of its own. Mm. So that's the problem. And another thing again is, how can institutions like the stock exchange, for instance, various financial market exchange, sensitize the public, especially here in Nigeria. Like for instance, everybody, young persons know about cryptocurrency, they know about forex trading and all those things. But if you talk about the Nigerian stock, they don't even understand, them. they don't know anything about it. Many of us, or many of them, or yeah, many of us, we don't know anything about it. <laughs> we, don't, we don't even have faith in it. For a few of us that even know in some things about it, we do, we say, oh, anything in Nigeria, we don't believe it mm. in our country. And it's not supposed to be because mm -hmm. Nigeria is a great country. Mm -hmm. How can the government provide an enabling environment and people will understand this and that, okay, I can be working somewhere, but I can have, I can buy in bonds, I can buy company shares, I can invest in this market, I can, maybe my pensions can go into mutual fund and why the government try to struggle with or try to provide the basic amenities so that the life will be easy for everyone. So these are things, these are the conversations mm. to have around it. You know, Ruth, I mean, we're talking about this you yes. know, when we're coming down mm -hmm. here. The, the truth is, like I, I shared with you privately, right? The truth is, 
And I love the way you ended, you know, your thoughts, which is financial planning, right? I mean, I've said to myself that I'm so, so, so um, laser focused on my savings culture, right? Nothing ain't going to come in between me and my savings. It's like my baby girl. <laughs> so nothing comes in between my savings, right? And I think the more, because the truth is family would always be there. And the extreme side of that could be entitlement. Yes. Where, you know, it happens with this whole elder, elder child kind of thingy. The elder child has to, to bear the burden for everyone. everyone. And what happens exactly. is, the elder child does that. And then over the years, the elder child begins person. to become grumpy, mm -hmm. become, begins to complain because, you know, down the years, his or her life hasn't amounted into any significance, right? Yeah. So I think it's about, so if you're earning 30K, right? You know, you say I'm saving 30% of 30K, right? So when you're not earning 300K, and you do 30 percent the the monies are going to be different mm -hmm. so it's about that consistency so you don't say oh i'm earning 300k now oh let me reduce it <laughs> to two percent because i'm earning much more so it's about maintaining that consistency because the truth is well how long they finish right <laughs> there are always problems so exactly. there will be problems so it's you saying listen you know i'm, I'm going to share something with personal so <laughs> we're making like a family contribution and then my mom told me that you know so you're going to you know draw 50k this month i said mom i'm not doing this right I've purchased something, you know, and I'm going to do my own contribution next month and I'm going to add something ex uh, to it. She was like, oh, please, please. I said, mom, you aren't going to, you know, blackmail me or something. I am I'm fixed on this. I'm looking at my savings sheet. I, I, like I have like an Excel sheet where I track everything, right? So no confusion. So I think it's about that financial planning, right? And then keep putting. So if you are consistently giving somebody 10K every month, it's better than 10K this month and then 50K after two years. No. Consistency. consistency and when you Plan. grow you are transparent you see that you've grown in your income you're giving them 10k now you're giving them 30k and you're giving them 50k you're giving them 100k that's that growth and they see you as someone that is really really you know intentional with your finance money money i like everything revolves around money money is a centerpiece of life and we're going to be careful how we really build a relationship with money yeah, thank you very much. I, I was just even thinking around everything everyone was saying, and I think the, the thoughts that keeps coming to my mind is that um, at the end of the day, there would always be something that you have to do mm. for your family. That I was even sounds, telling you the other day that sometimes you just even have to think of yourself. Very true. Self care. Yes, I want to share an experience. So, I want to share an experience because I've been laughing since. You know, since uh, she, she, um, Ruth was sharing her opinion, and I'm, I'm laughing so hard here. My cheek is, uh, my cheeks are hurting because here Sorry I, about am that, bro. <laughs> I am here in Cyprus, and I have an experience, a first hand experience of what you guys are saying. And so, so, first thing I want to say is that you see, problems will always be there, family will always be there, right? So it boils down on your own personal decision and your own personal goal. Before I traveled abroad, something very significant happened. And I want to share this for people that it might just inspire and all that. So I came back from a trip one time. I traveled abroad. I came back from a trip. And then I called my entire family and I told them, see, I want to embark on a project. I know this person is sick. This person is this. This person is that. Uh, house rent needs to be paid, blah, 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 and all those. I say, I know all these things are there. But you people see, I have money. It's not like I don't have money. Look at the kind of money, the amount of money I have. But you see this money. Even if anybody is dying now, <laughs> I'm not going to take out any tenkobo from this. I said, I can get emotional and give you, take you to the hospital, give this person, give this person. I said, the consequence is that in the next two years, all of us are still going to be on the same level. Mm. and so i zeroed my mind and for the first time i spent three good months i never looked right i never looked left i did not give anybody any time until three months i traveled abroad but what was the consequence was that by the time they left me alone i had more focus i had more energy i had more you know capacity i could do more for myself such that when it was time for me to leave the country i had enough money to give them so that they will not even be able to disturb me in the next six months. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So it's on two ways. First is from the individual that is being black taxed. What are your goals? Because the truth is that if you are not able to achieve your goals, you are still going to have your own self to blame. Nobody is going to bear that consequence for you. Nobody is going mm -hmm. to feel bad for you. It is you who knows the vision and the goal and the dreams you have for yourself. I always tell people that, listen, 
if you die right now, those people will find an alternative. And I told them, see, it went to so bad, I had to even look at my mom in the face. I said, see, if anybody dies now, the person is losing in advance. If you decide to die right now, you're losing in advance. So you better <laughs> be alive and watch me get to where I'm going. So what I'm saying is that for us as millennials, for us as young people, yes, we cannot afford to look away from our responsibilities. But we also need to start planning around those responsibilities. Because, um, like Onyekre, Victor gave an instance, if you're earning 30,000 Naira, you have to plan around 30,000 Naira. And perhaps your um, salary scales up to 100,000 Naira. You also need to plan around 30,000 Naira, uh, around 100,000 Naira. Not that it now gets to 100,000 Naira, you are giving 5% before, and now it's 100,000. You now quickly started giving you know, 50% of the money because you feel like the money is high. There is this principle that says that in this life, uh, I've forgotten the name of that principle, but it says that once people's income starts increasing, Taxes. automatically their need also starts going exactly. up with it. Exactly. Exactly. And so if you are not able to plan around those things, then you're going to have a lot of problems. So exactly. here I am laughing because this is a problem for people. And let me also say this. There is also this pressure, pressure not to be called a bad person, mm. pressure not to be, not to be labeled not to be labeled as irresponsible. In fact, I had an uncle that called me and said that uh, he had a, he had that I've not been uh, uh, taking care of my siblings, I've not been doing this, what kind of irresponsibility is that? By the time he was telling me this, I was already like two days away living to Nigeria. And I just smiled. I did not have any explanation to give to him. So black task will always be there, but you must not allow it to pressure you into not achieving your goal. You must have your savings. Any day you stop saving, you don't have any dime in your account. They are going to survive. They are going to find an alternative. They are going to find another person. In fact, you will not even matter because the things that have made them to come close to you was because you had those resources. And so you must do everything to ensure that you always have. Don't forget, even the um, holy book will always say that to him who has, more is going to be given to the person. Your ability to save means that you have the capacity to attract more resources. And anytime you start getting broke, Forget it. The one you have, they will sack all of them, and all of you will still be at the same level. And let mm. me also end with this. I had a very you know, powerful man who said something, that two people that are at the same level can never help themselves. Yeah. And so it has to take one person to come up, no matter what it means, even if it means you stepping on that person, that the other person, even if it means you coming up, but with the intention that by the time you are up, you can stretch out your hand and pull this person up. If that doesn't happen, then all of us are going to be at the same level and we'll be seeing black black task as a bad thing or as a negative thing just because we did not take responsibility of our savings culture thank you very much thank you very much um, raymond i think uh, just to put context to what he's just said the i think the quote is two poor people cannot help themselves mm. so i always tell people <laughs> you have to help yourself to be rich so that you can also help somebody else to be rich mm. um and i i think just before i round off on this conversation um I feel like it's important to also mention this like we cannot neglect our responsibilities especially when it comes yeah. to parents because me i am mm -hmm. very personal when it comes to my parents we cannot yeah. neglect that responsibility one thing I, I i i suggest for people to do is take insurance especially health insurance for your parents because that fifty thousand era health insurance can save you a hundred thousand era bill mm. so mm. i i took health insurance for my for my mom at one point and she needed to change her glasses. She needed to go to the hospital. I didn't have to remove a dime mm. from my pocket, which on I would have actually spent that and more on that. So I feel like there's there so many of these HMOs now that are um, given opportunities for insurance, knowing fully well that health is something that our parents are subject to. So we need to take health insurance. So um, right now, Felix is going to be the next after the break. <laughs>